This is an unboxing and walk around video for the TJL Mini Goose. Several months ago, I ordered the XUAV uh, Snow Goose uh, when there was a uh, promotion on Facebook, and this is what arrived. Uh, there was some damage to the box uh, in transit, which you can see there it was kind of crushed. There was a small amount of damage to the fuselage, but it's not too bad, and I'll show that to you in the course of this video. Apart from that damage to the exterior of the box, uh, the contents were well packaged. Uh, using foam, uh, cardboard spaces, and so on, in the way that's pretty standard for XUAV. The instructions are quite simple, uh, but clear, and on the first page, the key specifications for the plane are set out, including its wingspan, 1800 millimeters. The instructions also call for two 2814 motors, two 10x6 props, and two 40 MPSCs. The instructions also suggest a 4S battery with a capacity of 10 to 22 amp hours. Here you can see the plastic parts uh, which hold everything together. This is one of the tail feathers now. Nothing is glued together so it'll be really easy to install your servos and the cable runs for your servos. And here's just a comparison with a mini talon tail feather to show you how big it is. Having an overall look now at the uh, main fuselage and inboard part of the wings, you can see that the internal volume of this plane is, is really gigantic. Uh, there are two compartments underneath that hatch. Uh, there is a separate uh, hatch a little bit further back, which I'll show a little while. And here on the fuselage, uh, you can see that damage that I mentioned a little bit earlier. This is the uh, site for mounting a GPS. Um, and here you can see just the cross uh, section of the wing. As I rotate the plane around, you'll see that there's some additional damage in between the fuselage and the hatch. It's not really anything too significant. I flipped the plane upside down now and have separated the top and bottom halves. You can see there's a cavity running the length of the fuselage there and a perspex stiffener uh, is inserted into there. Uh, there's not much to the wings. Um, I'm not entirely sure the uh, hinge is strong enough. This is the rear of the fuselage underneath where there's this pretty cool little hatch that can have barn doors opening if you want to uh, drop candy or uh, set something up there that would require that kind of opening. It's pretty cool. This is the inboard section of the wing where there's a piece you've removed to install your ESCs, uh, the carbon rod uh, that join the wings together and so on. Elastic pieces are provided that can be used to hold the hatches on, although to be honest I'm not sure I'll use those in my install some magnets. Now, if you set this up as a standard plane, um, it will take a larger prop than 10x6. That's an 11x7 prop and that's a 12 by six inch prop. You can see that there's still um, enough clearance uh, to run a prop of that size if you wanna run something with really big props. Uh, the tail design on this plane is really fantastic. It's possible to assemble the plane and still have the tail sections removable. The foam of the tail feathers glues into the plastic joiner pieces, and then the joiner pieces uh, click onto the central cone shaped piece, which then joins the fuselage. There's some additional hardware which isn't shown uh, in that part of the video. Now I've slid the outboard sections of the wings onto the plastic joiners and you can see the whole plane. This is a comparison for size uh, with a mini talon quad plane. While it is larger, if it's broken apart for transport, I think the individual components would be smaller. I'm planning to build my mini goose as a tilt rotor quad plane. And in this section of the video, I'm just gonna show you some of those components. Uh, these are the uh, robot servos that'll be used for the tilt rotors. If you build it as a standard plane, it calls for 2814. That's, I just had one of those, so I thought I'd show you what that looks like in terms of positioning it on, on the motor mount. Uh, but because I'm building the tilt rotor, I'm currently planning to run 3508 motors with 12 by six props, maybe 12 by four, it's hard to say. Now the 3508 motors won't sit in the same position as the standard motor would. And there'll be a robot servo in between the motor mount and the motor. Uh, the motors will be a little bit further forward. In the vertical phase of flight, the motors will uh, tilt upwards and then tilt forwards. In terms of servos, that's an MG90. It's obviously a pretty popular servo in the 13 gram sort of category. This is a high-tech HS81. As a 17 gram servo, it's in the right category and it's pretty much a perfect fit. This is the nose of the plane where there are some other openings, perhaps for airspeed sensors or antennas. And there's also a block of foam that can be removed if you want to position a camera there. 
Now I'm going to show you that cavernous uh, space inside the fuselage and fit a couple of batteries. So these are Zippy Compact 4S 5800mAh and you can see that there is plenty of space. Um, there's plenty of space for two such packs uh, in this fuselage for a combined uh, capacity of 11,600mAh. Now a flight controller could go uh, in uh, this hatch which is quite close to the centre of gravity uh, or it could go in the hatch which is further aft. It's really just a matter of choice uh, where you put your flight controller based on what other cable runs uh, you need to make. Um, I, I really don't know where I'll put mine just yet. The internal space is really nicely set out though. So for instance, there's the site to mount a GPS and there are plenty of uh, small holes and things within the foam where you can run cables. Um, it's, it's really very well, well thought out. Well, that's about it for this unboxing and walk around video uh, for the XUAV uh, Snow Goose or the TJL Mini Goose. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, let me know.